Tasha and Nicole. You want me to ask you, hey, how oh, are you? Tasha and Nicole. Okay, Tasha. Okay, hey guys, I am back. I am back. Um, I'm going to introduce this new author that just, you know, she's a part of our um, herpreneur virtual tour. I'm excited about her being a part of this tour. Um, Tasha Nicole, makeup makeover coach. Tasha Nicole will be joining us on the live. I just want to um, introduce her. We're going to find out what she got going on, her new book that's going on. Um, all the other things that she got going on so we can get very familiar with her. And guess what? Go buy her book, guys. Let's support her. So I'm going to bring her on now. Let's add her to the group. Hey, pretty lady. How are Hello, you doing? Everybody. Good. How are you? I am doing so great. So tell everybody who you are, uh, where you're from, the name of this great book, and why did you write this book? Um, I am Tasha Nicole. I am the makeover coach and I am originally from Canton, Ohio by way of Ohio. And I currently live in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. And so I, um, I wrote my book simply because it was a, a healing process for me. It was something that, um, I felt that it needed to be out. It was my story and it was basically and it's called silent no more because what i was doing was i was unmuzzling myself from being silent about things that have happened to me and things that i had going on and experiences that i've had being a single mother being married being um you know going through a divorce and all of that so, and i just felt like certain, certain things needed to be voiced certain things needed to be said and um i basically did it where it was almost like a healing because I'm, you know, still healing from some things, but I did it more or less where it was a healing, um, like affirmation type book, where if you read it, um, it has different affirmations in there, different quotes and all, all of that so that it can help you to heal as well from whatever it is that you're going through, whatever um, topic that you might be able to fit into your life. Well, we are still alive and we're going to wait um, for Miss Nikki Ziegler to get back on. I'm not exactly sure um, what's going on with the um, service and the Internet. It's really acting crazy right now. So we're going to give her a chance to jump back on. But you guys um, make sure that you support all of the authors that have been a part of this tour. It's been amazing. I've been watching from my end and um commenting and enjoying some of the stories from the other authors so i am super excited about even having this opportunity to be a part and um to be on this wonderful tour i'm super excited about it so again we're gonna kind of allow miss ziegler to um jump back on here um whenever she gets her um things situated here here she goes she's back they do not want this interview to happen. I, this is this is crazy. No, he does not. But I did a good. He I did some commentating on Sean, so I did <laughs> to make sure that the people stay entertained. This is what I do. So I just wanted to make sure that they understood that there were some technical difficulties and that you would be right back. And I enjoyed uh, having the opportunity. Oh, no, <laughs> the devil is a lie. Okay, so let's go back. Let's begin. Let's begin. Okay, so my question to you, you you wrote this book, okay? God has mandated you to write this book. I mean, the devil is a lie. I'm just binding every spirit right now in Jesus name. Yeah, in the name of what Jesus. What would you tell in the, in the name of Jesus right now? What do you tell your 13-year-old self right now? What do you tell your 13 year old self? All the hell you'd have been through all to overcome these obstacles that have had your life. What do you tell your 13 year old self? That it, it gets better. It gets better. There is light at the end of the tunnel and um, that you are broken to glow. You're broken to glow. That a, a glow stick can only serve its purpose 
when it's broken. And so that's what I would tell myself is that you're, you're, it gets light at the end of the tunnel and that you're broken the glow. In this time of season, because of the pandemic, is so many people are hurting. So many people are struggling. You got this crazy election going on everywhere. What kind of encouragement can you give to the people today that can help them see who God is? Whew, that's a that's a a, a really packed question. Um, that's a really packed question. I honestly can say that I, <laughs> I, I feel that um, the Holy Spirit allowed us to have the opportunity to get things right behind closed doors, and He did that by yes. making us have to visit ourselves where we are running from ourselves and with being busy and, and having things going and doing stuff. Oh, so he made us have to sit down. So we have to really focus on who we really are because a lot of us made this, this illusion and this impression of who we really are when we're not really that. So it gave us the opportunity to be able to really sit down and figure out who we really are. So the one thing encouragement that I would tell people is that to focus on the one thing that you can control and that is yourself. And when you sit down and you take that opportunity to do that, then you can stop running from yourself. You can stop running from your truths. You can stop running from who you really are and really focus in on who you are. And if that means that you need to seek counseling, if that means that you need to just talk to some individual who may have hurt you or some individual that may have offended you, you know, take that opportunity to do that and be able to, um, you know, really seek God and really hone into his word and stay encouraged that way. We have, we have to stay encouraged because all the stuff that's going on in this community world with all the racism that's going on in the world, if we, sometimes God will have you just to encourage yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to learn how to pat yourself on the back and say you can make that's it because in this time of season, it's so many people that don't want to see you make it with the racism and the black on black it's like you have to you have to surround yourself around women and men of God that's gonna hold you accountable for what you got going on and also pray and meditate with you so you can live the life that God has for you. Because in this pandemic time, people are saying, you know, God said rest. In this pandemic time, people are also saying that God, you know, well, you need to sit down and 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 pay attention. But I think in this time of season, God also is birthing a lot of new people like even you i know god showed you some things this 2020 year that make you Absolutely. think about oh man i never thought about this like he has and he that's crazy thinking that's the crazy you. thing yep yep and i was about to say that's crazy that you said that because um the women's conference that i just did um in october at the end of october that was the topic was or the, excuse me the theme for the conference was hearing the vision clearly and so it's based off of Habakkuk 2 and 2 where it talks about writing the vision and making it plain and I was saying that we have to hear God first before we can write the vision and if you look at the first part of that verse it simply says and he heard him or and, and it depends on what you know uh which uh version of the uh like an niv or whatever which version you're reading but it says and he heard him or and he said unto me and you have to hear god clearly before you can write the vision to make it plain and if, if you didn't and this, we do have to sit down we have to stop running because again it, it was a lot of opportunity that god wanted us to birth but we were too busy doing our own thing and too busy doing other things that he had to sit us down so that we could birth the things that he needed for us to birth. I mean, I started, I wrote one book in January and I'm literally on my uh, third book for this year. So. Yes, God, come on through. Yes. I love that. My question what do you tell and inspire who wants to write a book and don't even know where to start? What's, what's your advice to them? My advice is to definitely figure it out what you want to write about. If you're writing about your life, make sure that you are genuinely ready to talk about it. Um, because if you're not ready to talk Come about on, it, you know, people can write about it and they want to they write it in the bitterness. They write it in unforgiveness. 
Um, and then they honestly end up having to go back and once they read it, I've heard several times people say, I've read what I wrote before and I don't even want to advertise it and I want to unpublish it because I, I realized that I was writing out of anger and I don't want it to be out there anymore. So when oh, you're wow. writing, make sure that you're writing it um, from a place of forgiveness, from a place of not being bitter and make sure that you really want that story to be out there. Because once it's out there, um, then it's out there and you can't not take it back once those words are out there. And so just make sure that you're in a, in a at least being healed or in a healing process when you are writing. That would be to me the very first. That's good. The very first part. So oh, what is your why? <laughs> what would be your why? My why, honestly, is just to be effective and to serve and do kingdom business. That's it. My why is kingdom work, kingdom business, being kingdom minded and genuinely um, what they say the the marketplace ministry is what we um, should be mm. focusing on right now. And I feel like, it, again, going back to the pandemic, is that what we've had to focus on now is being marketplace ministers and being able to be in the marketplace because um, we took us out of the four walls. And I think that that would be my why is to focus in on being um, in that marketplace to do what it is God has called me to do. Wow. And it's, you know what? It's so, it's so important to know what God has called you to do. It is important because sometimes we can be so out of God's will that we will do justice and we will hurt people who God, you know what I'm saying? We just got to listen. We got to hear his, we got to be in his will. We got to seek him first. Every step we make. Like you, I never thought about that. I don't know how many people have wrote books and God never told them to even write book. How many people have wrote books and God never told them? I mean, like they out of order. How many women did? That's something to think about. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, it's like you're going in. I got to. We got to redo this interview because this is good. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Ooh, that's why they didn't want us to. Because you're talking about some stuff I never even thought about. No, out of everybody I've interviewed, ninety authors, no one never said it was people. Who have wrote books that did it out of emotions? I've never heard. Of them. Oh yeah, the devil is busy. He don't want this interview to happen. Listen here, listen here. It's okay. The devil is busy. He don't want this interview to happen. <laughs> he mad. Let him be mad. But you know what? It's so funny to me. I mean, just to think about how many people have wasted their money on emotions. They never, they never was appointed to write books. They wrote on emotions. That's a whole nother subject that need to be talked about. Emotional driven authors. Did you write it? Did you write it because God told you to write it, or did you write it because you was trying to? Throw darts, or you was trying to get back at your ex husband, or you trying to get back at your mama. I mean, go there. We can really go there. Absolutely, that's something to think about. My God, yeah, <laughs> my God, that's awesome. That's awesome. You don't brought me to a whole little. I'm all hot. <laughs> mm. My God. I am so serious. I am. This is a good interview. That's why they're trying to fight this interview. My God. How do they find your book? And do you have a copy of the book with you? I don't. I actually, it's a good reason why I don't have a copy of either of the books. Um, I sold out, so I don't have any more with me. Um, it's, so I don't have any of them uh, with me at all today because I did so, so sell what out of them. Huh? Can, can you put it in, in the comments? Can you put in the comments where they can find the book at? Where can they get the book yes, at? Yes, absolutely. Um, they can get the book at my website. That is www.tashanicole.com. That is T-A-I-S-H-A-N-I-C-H-O-L-E.com. And that is www.tashanicole.com. Do you see as we're ending now, the, now the live is good? Right. I see that because he didn't want me to say what I needed to say, but you know what? It's okay. 
No, because we got out, baby. My next interview, look, I don't know text her. We we got time. We got time. <laughs> baby, you said some stuff to me that got me. Lord God. I mean, it just it just makes you think. It makes you think like where people mindset is at. Guys, even on this live, and you know, I, I, a lot of my people do replays, so they're gonna make a watch live. Let me say right. something to you. As authors, we're authors. Listen, don't get up here penning a book on your emotions, because what you gotta understand, you will make your situation worse than what it is. God's not gonna honor when you're not in His will. He's not gonna honor your book if you did it all because you wanna throw darts at different people that you have tried, you know, who have attacked you. Re um, revenge is of the Lord. He handles everything that dealing with you. If somebody did something to you, baby. Let God handle that way. You don't handle it. Absolutely. You don't handle it. And I think and that that's what the problem. And that was one of the things that when I wrote my book, there's a lot of stuff that I did talk about and things that happened to me. But what I did was I formatted my book so that I could say, this happened. This is what happened. This is the bad stuff that happened. This is what happened to me, or this is what I did. This is how I got through it, and to, and to use it to encourage somebody else. So the book is set up so it tells. Again, I have affirmations, I have quotes in there, and it tells a lesson. So it tells you in each chapter the lesson that you should have gotten from that chapter. And after each chapter, it has the uh, journal entry part where you can write in the journal part to talk about for yourself or to pull out some things that you might have learned from that chapter so that's how i wrote it because the intentions were no i'm gonna tell my story and some people were not happy about the what i told or how i said it however this is what i learned from that and this is how i grew from that and this is how i got through it and again it might be somebody else going through the same exact thing so with that being said i need to encourage you to let you know that just like i made it through or just like i'm making it through you can do the same thing you can do the same thing come on glory come on glory and guess what you can do the same thing because you're you being obedient that's Absolutely. gonna bless you because you was obedient so that's why your books could be sold out. They could be sold out because guess what? You did exactly what God told you to do. You know what I'm saying? You was obedient. You knew what you had to do. You did what you had to do. So guess what God said? Well, you know what? Every time she get a, get three, four hundred books, I'm going to sell them out. Every time you do this, I'm going to sell them out because you was obedient. And God saw that. So guess yeah. what? As a black woman to a black woman, keep pushing. Keep striving. Stay focused. Surround yourself around people who can get you to where you need to be at. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I need help. Can y'all help me over here? It's hey, I need help. Can y'all help me over here? <laughs> but, you know, it's so funny because everything that I do is um, it, it it goes along with everything that I do. So, again, I, I've deemed myself the makeover coach. And you can see all the colors and stuff behind me. But I deem myself the makeover coach because, again, I originally I do hair. I do makeup. I'm in the industry um, I, these are my own bundles, you know, so everything that I do, my goal is even with my women's conference is to allow women to know the importance of being um, made over from the inside out. You want to be just as beautiful on the inside as you are on the outside. And so yeah. with that being said, like even in my book, I wrote about this. I call them I factors and the I factors are the number one I factor is to love and respect you. Number two is to find your why. Number mm -hmm. three is to find a mentor, life coach, or counselor. Number four is to focus on your mental, physical, and spiritual health. Number five is to be at peace with you and affirm yourself daily. And number six is to forgive and forgive yourself and to forgive others. And so that, those are things that I had to apply to myself and I applied them to myself every single day because my thing is I can't coach somebody else a strategy that I'm not using on myself. So I coached myself and I'm coaching myself um, through I'm gonna get um, this. Speech. I'm going to coach myself me? through this. Ma'am. Do you see time you start talking? That's when it start cutting up. Yep. So, um, but, <laughs> but it's all, it's all. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to bring you back. I'm going to have to bring you back there. I'm, I'm going to do a female discussion or a female panel 
the first week of December, I got to bring you back because I need people that's transparent. You got to be transparent. You cannot be so, I don't know how to say it, so holier that you know earthly good. We need people that's going to speak truth. We need people that's going to be diverse and don't have a problem calling calling a spade a spade. And we and women need to have real conversations. Absolutely. You don't have those real conversations. Even for you to even for me, if you go back and you watch my watch my I never ask no one what is their why. I ask you a question, not know you had that in your book and ain't even know it was in your book. I've never asked nobody what is their why. I've never asked that question. That gonna crack some head. It's gonna be about if not take the next level. I'm just at one now. I'm I won't change. I want to be a around around who gonna. You you still there? Y'all, the enemy does not want this interview to happen. He doesn't want this interview to happen. I don't know what it is. Lord, when I tell you that he is a liar, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted in Jesus' is Lord. I bind this interview. Lord God, I ask you to come into this place. I ask you, I, Lord, I bind you. God. Well, we thank you, Lord. The devil did thank not you, Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, in the I name of Jesus. Cover this in Jesus' name. Yes, cover this God. Whoever in the name of this woman of God. Whatever your whole will is for your life, Lord God, you just give it to her, Lord God. No weapon form against us shall yeah, prosper. Who says your name, Lord yeah, God? Yeah, Let yeah, her open up her mouth and speak. And when she speak, Lord God, she's tearing down every stronghold. Lord yes, God, I know she's yeah, special yeah. because I've been yeah, 107 women, Lord God, in five yeah. days, and no one has act like this. No, Thank no you. internet have never been no internet problems, Lord God. So I know you have a strategic calling on her life, and you're trying yes. to close her mouth up so the world won't hear what you have told her yes. to say. I bind that spirit of distraction right now in Jesus' name. I send it to the pits of hell right now. I ask you to come into this God right now, Lord God, because of the word that she has, Lord God, and you have called her favor. You have called her favorite, Lord God. You Thank you, favor. Thank you. And Lord God, I pray right Thank now. You. And I know I interviewed 107 women in five days, and I have never had no technical difficulty, no none of this, Lord God. So I know the devil's trying to attack this woman of God, but we bind that spirit up right now, Lord God. The spirit of distraction, you got to go to the pits of hell. Yes, God. Help us, Lord yeah. God, to send the spirit of distraction to hell in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask you to just cover her her mouth, cover her feet, cover her hands, cover her heart, cover her head, Lord God, cover her nose and her eyes in Jesus' name, Lord God. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do in her life, Lord God. I see her face on billboards, Lord God. I see her face on in the radio, Lord God. I see her face on TV right now, Lord God. I see her in London right now, Lord God. I see her in Africa right now, Lord God. I see her in why right now, Lord God? I see her all over the world, Lord God. You said that her ministry is going to be 
God. And we ask you, God, and we ask you to show yourself strong on the mic right now, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Not to distract you, right? The word of God is telling me to tell you this right here. You keep on posting on Facebook. I don't care if you get two likes. They watching. They receiving. They watching your page. They're not liking your page because of the. the they are intimidated about your spirit, man. But you keep on. You keep on posting. You keep on speaking. Keep on living the word of God because the more, the more you you knocking down a stronghold that has been a, a, against your generation, where people have put their mouth on you. They put their mouth on your family. They have put your, their mouth on your business. But God got you covered by the blood of Jesus. That's why he didn't want you to speak today. But God already said that he made you before you was even born into your mother. He was. And that's in Jeremiah. He already knew who you was. That's why the devil tried to fight you. But you got to keep going. Don't worry about the lights. Don't worry about the shine. God said he shall get your humbleness. And one thing about you, you stay being a straight shooter. Don't fake it. Be real. Say what you got to say. Keep moving. Because God got your back. No matter how you feel, reject. I denounce that spirit and reject. Don't worry about being with the in crowd. You are set apart because of procurator. The devil don't want you to hear this. Jesus. God told me to give you this word. Stay focused on what matters, and that's Christ Jesus. The devil has been trying to attack you for a long time. But he will not win. Stay focused. Watch this right here. Make sure whatever you say, God tell you to say it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, young lady? Stay focused on God. God has a calling on your life. You ain't seen nothing yet. You finna be international, baby. You got to get ready. God's... Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Powerful woman of God. This had, this assignment had nothing to do with this herpanoa boot. Oh my God! This assignment had nothing to do with this daggone book tour. But you had to get your word, and the devil didn't want you to get it, so he played you. He didn't want you to get back on here. He tried to even take you off the off the tour. He tried to take you off the tour, but God had another plan for you. Man, girl, you listen to me. You are called and appointed. Called and appointed. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Focus, baby. Post. Post. Speak. Do lives. Speak it to these people. Life, they need to hear you. It's some stuff that you got to tell some people. Don't you hold back on them. You give it to them. Because if you don't, God going to look at you. You got to be obedient. Obedient is better than sacrifice. You got to be obedient. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. Lord, I praise you on today. Ooh, Jesus. I don't know why this won't happen. Didn't know what God was doing, but he was up to something. He knew it. That's why he didn't want the devil did not want you on this live. Because he didn't he didn't want you to hear what God had for you. Don't you worry about the naysayers. You are supposed to be different. And you be careful who you connect your name to. You be careful who you connect your power source to. Your power source is in Christ Jesus. They ain't got nothing to do with man. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, woman of God? Yes. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you all praise. Yes, Lord. Lord, I give you all the glory, Lord God. Lord, I thank you on the, today, Lord God. Lord, you came into the woman's life, Lord God. I know it was you because I've dealt with too many people and it never went like this. 
Never went like this, Lord God, but we get we thank you Ooh. for showing up into this place. God, I bless your Lord name. God, you're so worthy. Yes, Lord God, you're so worthy, Lord God. <laughs> Yeah, God, I thank you, Lord. God, I bless you. I bless your name, Jesus. God, I thank you, God. Thank you, woman of God, for being obedient. Thank you for hearing from God because I was struggling. I just told somebody the same exact thing. I said I haven't been posting because I was trying to revamp some things and pull some things back because I want to make sure that it's done in excellence. And so thank you for that confirmation. Thank you. Thank mm. you. And if you ever need me, you call me. I'm going to inbox you my personal number. I want you to call my phone. And I want you to stay connected because the calling that you have on your life, you got to be strategic who you be connected to. And you have to be connected to people who have a good heart. Amen. Or they'll prostitute your ministry. That's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> Been there and done that. Been there and done that. So make sure you hear from him. Amen. You ain't got to go through nobody else to hear from him. God will speak directly to you. He will. Amen. Yeah. I love you. I love you more. Thank you again for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. I'm going a whole different way. <laughs> God don't have no agenda. He said, bump all this interview stuff. That ain't what I want to do. He said, because there's some people that are on this line who needed that. They needed that release. They needed that breakthrough. Not just them, but me. And I know for, for sure that it was for me. Um, it's a lot of different things. So I know that someone else on this line needed to get that breakthrough, that blessing, and they needed to hear. They needed to hear that because that wasn't just for me. That was for someone else as well, you know, that you you are different, you are peculiar, and you're not going to fit in. And what God has given to you, He's going to make a He's going to make provision for the vision that He's giving you. And that's one of the things that has been raining and ringing in my, you know, it's I, it's not just my books, you know. I like I said, I have so many other things. I got my own flat irons, my own makeup brushes, my own eyeshadows. I have I have all kind I have all kind of stuff, you know. I mean, like I'm gonna be. I'm gonna tell you how God worked with me. Some stuff I don't remember what I say. I have to go back and say, okay, what did I just say? You know what I'm saying? Because I get so caught up because I want to make sure I'm saying what he, but you know what? Now I know because when he said Dubois, I'm like, Dubois, she better go to Dubois. Like, what is going on? Girl, when I say a boss mindset, see, God, let me tell you something. You're going to have to pour back into other people. You got to do it. God doesn't give you this kind of knowledge for you to hold on to. And the struggle that you've been through, it wasn't even about you. You went through the struggle and the process to help other people not to go down the same road. You know why I can say that? Because I've been through it. You're different. You're different. You, you don't think like everybody else. You a big, You have a business mindset. So with that business mindset, you always try to figure, okay, what's next? What's going on? What are we doing next? You know what I'm saying? Okay, God, got this. No, okay, I got to do this. Got to do this. Got to do this. God is working all that thing out. And I see an empire. I don't see just the flat eyes. I see a full empire. But God wants you to specifically deal with Christian women. Those who are broken Christian women. They know of him, but they don't know their power source. Absolutely. So he gonna have Ain't nothing wrong with speaking God in Jesus Christ when you're doing hell. Ain't nothing wrong with playing your gospel music while you're doing makeup. Ain't nothing wrong with talking about God into your classes that you're going to start training people on. God is going to strategically plant you in places that you ain't never seen before. Mm -hmm. I promise you, when it happens, just, you know what I'm saying, just wave at me and say, Coach Nikki, God, pray for me, child. 
and tell me what you need me to pray for, and we're gonna be on one accord. Cause where two or more gather in the name, He is yeah. in the midst. He is in the midst. Amen. Amen. You can do the rest of your day. You if do you need me, I am here. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Take care, woman of God. You too. Have a great one. <laughs> too bye. Oh, we're ready for that one. My God. I can't do nothing but shake my head. I promise you, God show up in this place today. Okay, guys, see y'all back at four thirty. My God, that was the most. That was the most.